Well, if we don't believe that we're the real Jews, the other Jews, the slavery that they were. Are we are you talking about the Jewish people? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is that, okay. Is that what you guys believe? Mm -hmm. No, we're Jewish. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit different? Ba Baptist Christianity, traditional You guys are Baptist? Okay, I was, yeah. a, I was a Baptist as well. Okay. I was a Baptist as well. I like that. So, uh, you, so I'm sure all of y'all have heard of the Israelites before though, right? Mm -hmm. You are aware that they are God's chosen people in the Bible? Mm -hmm. You have read that? Mm -hmm. Let's read it right quick. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. Deuteronomy 7, verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God should have chosen thee to be a special people among himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So now in that verse, it said that the children of Israel are a holy people to God. The word people is race and nation, right? So now I'm sure you all go to church, so you know what holy is. It's pure, it's set apart, it's special. So God told this nation that they were special, that they're pure, that they're holy to him. And then he called them, he chose them above all the people that are upon the face of the earth, right? Now that's something good, right? Now with this people, he said that he made a covenant with them, basically. You guys know what a covenant is, right? Like a doctor and union? Right, like an agreement. When you, when you get married, you make vows to your wife or your husband, and those are the terms and the agreements of that union, of that coming together, right? In the same way, Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, is an agreement or a covenant between God and his people, the children of Israel. And look what he tells them, verse 1. And it shall come to pass, you have to read up the book of Jesus. And it shall come to pass, thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee up high above all the nations of the earth. For now God is telling them, the only way I'm going to set you above is if you keep my commandments. If you listen to me and you listen to my commandments, that's when I'll bless you, right? But look what he says if they don't listen in verse 15. But it shall come to pass, that I will not hearken to the Lord of God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes of which I command thee this day, and that all these curses shall come upon thee, overtake you. Now God said if you don't listen to the commandments, then I'm going to curse you. Now why is this important? Read 46 because these curses is how we know that black people or African Americans are the Israelites, are God's chosen people spoken of in the Bible. Look what he says these curses will be. All, of them, all these curses shall come upon you according to what, what God yeah, what? All, of them, all these curses shall come upon you and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed because thy heart is not into the, law, the voice of the Lord thy God and the curse will keep on happening because you didn't listen to God and whatever to keep his commandments and the statutes which he commanded thee and all they shall be upon thee for a sign 46. and they shall be upon thee for and a they, sign the they here is the curses the curses will be what? for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seat forever. So now, if I knew any one of you guys, and I said, wait, where you at? He said, I don't know, but I see a main event and a gourmet burgers and brews. Immediately, I know where you're at. I can mark your location. In the same way, these curses are assigned to know where and who the children of Israel are. It said that there will be a sign and a wonder and upon their seed forever. You guys know what your seed is in the Bible? Like your offspring. Your offspring, right? Your children. So the Israelites to this day, even today, the Israelites walking the earth, they will be going through these curses. What we're going to show you is that all of you are the children, are the descendants of these Israelites who God is talking to. And we're going to prove that with these curses. Read 32. 32. Huh? Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Stop. Has there ever been a time in black people's history where our sons and daughters were given to another people? In slavery, right? And what else? And thy eyes shall look and fell with longing for them all the day long. Then they take these children from their parents and their parents will be screaming and hollering and crying for them. That's what it means when it says and your eyes will look and fail with longing for them all the day long. And you'll see them take them and then you will be upset because we're going to take away from you. What else? There shall be no might in thine hand. There will be no might, no strength, no power. 
Were these parents able to get their children back? No, they just had to be taken, right? Read 41. Verse 41. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters. You'll have children. But thou shalt not enjoy them. Why? For they shall go into captivity. Anybody know what captivity is? Right, it's slavery, basically. Yeah. The children were going to slavery. Didn't African Americans have children going to slavery? Verse 64. Verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people, from one end of the earth, even unto the other. So now, was America the only place where they brought slaves? Uh, where else they brought slaves? Uh, Caribbean, Caribbean, Central America, South America, Europe, Africa. Has anybody ever heard of the Arab slave trade? Anybody? Yeah. yeah. Who was the Arab slave trade? Uh, I can't remember where they, where they brought them. They came all the from the Middle East. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's, that's perfect. They brought them from East Africa to China, India, Indonesia. Same people. Do y'all know of any other race who have been scattered, like it said in the Bible, from what? Read that again. From one end of what? From one end of the earth, even unto the other. Do y'all know of any other race that has ever been sold into slavery from one end of the earth, even to the other in that way? Well, the Jews were scattered pretty far and wide back in there. Which one? The Jewish people? Yeah, the Jewish people. Oh, all the Jewish people. Yeah, the Jews. Were the Jewish people ever brought into slavery to America? Well, no, America wasn't part of the known world at that time. Exactly. But you know who was brought into slavery in America? African American. I think Jewish people were scattered for a different reason. They were just slavery. Well, you have the Exodus here, right? So we know in Exodus they were enslaved in Egypt. Exactly, they were enslaved in Egypt, right? But I said, y'all know about that, right? They were slaves in Egypt. Mm -hmm. Now, in Egypt, right, when Moses was a child, who was he raised under? The Pharaoh. The Pharaoh's daughter, right? Now, did the Pharaoh know that that was her actual, or did, did the Pharaoh know that that wasn't her child? The Pharaoh's daughter? Yeah. Well, yeah, she knows. He knew that that wasn't her child? The Pharaoh, no, the Pharaoh didn't. He didn't know, right? No. It doesn't really say whether or not he knew it. Well, she didn't tell him until later. Okay. So he didn't know that this, like she raised him as if she was hers. Mm -hmm. She was really a Hebrew child, right? Now, this is my question. If the Hebrews are Jewish, like you said, wouldn't it be obvious if a African Egyptian woman is raising a Caucasian Jewish child? Wouldn't that be obvious that that's not her child? I mean, not necessarily. If you look at like what the people in the Middle East look like today, they have a lot of similar characteristics. The people, in, the Jewish people? Well, yeah, the Jews, the Egyptians, North Africa, Saudi Arabia, a lot of those people look pretty similar. I don't know that you can necessarily say that. There's a big distinction. Well, the, the, the Egyptians today are not the same Egyptians that live in, uh, in antiquity. Okay. There's a bit of a difference there. Those were Hamites. Who lived there. The Egyptians now are Arabs. So the Hamites were always a people of a darker hue. All right? So the Egyptians during that time were dark skinned, the same way that they are today. Now, the Caucasian Jewish people today who are Jewish, wouldn't it be obvious if an African woman was raising a Caucasian Jewish male? Wouldn't it be obvious that mm, that's not her child, right? I don't think she really tried to pass him off as him not being her child. Well, I was just saying that because um, there's this thing where, like you're reading these curses, these curses apply to black people. There's never really been a time where Jewish people have had their children taken from them and brought to the four corners of the earth. He said from one end of the earth to the other, meaning that includes all the places like God made all, all the earth. So if he's saying, I'm going to scatter my people if they don't listen to me, to all the earth, that includes North and South America. That includes China. Jewish people were never brought to slavery in China. They were never brought to slavery in Australia or Indonesia or India. But you know who was? African slaves and the Arab slaves. That's what I'm trying to show. But contextually, if you think about the literature and the idea of them being scattered across the world as they knew it, their known world in that context, they were scattered around. So it's just, I think it's, it's kind of like a literature debate on how you read it. Yeah, it's like almost like semantics, like what they know versus what it actually is. Yeah, yeah I get that. I get that. Well, let's, let's give a little bit more proof here. Go to Exodus chapter 4. Let's look at Moses. 
Because Moses, one of the ways that we know that the Israelites in the Bible were a people of Negro descent, or what we would call today Black African American, is because of the way that they're described throughout the Bible, right? Exodus chapter 4, and uh, give me verse 6. Verse 6? Yeah. And the Lord said, Furthermore, unto him. So now this is God talking to Moses, right? Remember, Moses was scared to lead the people at first. He was very scared. He didn't really want to do it. So God is showing him signs to tell him, like, look, I'm with you, right? Here's the first sign that he gives him. Put now thine hand into thy bosom. So now Moses put his hand into his bosom, right? That's the sign that he's showing him. And what he did? And he put his hand into his bosom. Mm -hmm. And when he took it out, took his hand out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. Do you guys know what leprosy is? Yeah. What's the skin disease? Yeah. Basically, the what you say? Brotal. Leprosy in the Bible. Does that mean what's the definition of that? Yeah, I'm, I'm asking, do you guys know what that means? Yeah, your body parts kind of yeah. ride away to heal off and stuff. Exactly. So what color does it turn? It's like white. It's white, right? Yeah. Have you ever seen black people with villilago? Yeah. That's what leprosy is here. Moses put his hand into his bosom. And when he pulled his hand out, it became leprous and snow. Now, that is a common disease amongst people of a hue, the dark hue specifically, because of the fact that you just have melanin in your skin, right? But what else happened? This is a sign, though. He's not really having leprosy. This is a sign. So what do he do next? And he said again, put thine hand into thy bosom again. So he said, put your hand back into your bosom again. And he put his hand into his bosom again and plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it was turned again his other flesh. So then it was turned back into his other flesh, right? Now, if it was white at first and then it turned back into his other flesh, what would that mean? Right, he regained his melanin, right? That's the point. And how do we know that? Moses was a black man in essence. Because whenever he was met by the Midianite women in Exodus chapter 2, they mistook him for an Egyptian. And the, the Egyptians are dark-skinned people, right? How could you confuse a dark-skinned person with Moses unless Moses was a dark-skinned man who was an Israelite as well? And again, the reason why we're showing you this is because if I ask any of you guys what's your race today, most of you would tell me black, African-American, right? Do you know that those are not real nationalities or terms? Yeah. You know that, right? You're just American. Right. So why do we call out something? Because you don't have anything else. But well, that's not the case. You do, but it's been taken away from you. Right? Read Jeremiah 17 and 4. And you just let me know whenever you guys do. Yeah. So I guess we, I have a question. Yeah. How do you know that the leprosy is not real leprosy? It's so that's the other. Because the turning white is still a part of that. It's still a symptom. So how do you... What's your evidence that it's not a leprosy? Well, that's a great question. There are many types of leprosy. Okay. There's leprosy where your skin deteriorates. There's leprosy that turns into a boil, like a, like it'll be like a huge, like a boil in your skin. Mm -hmm. There'll be a leprosy that turns into like a, a reddish scab looking thing. Okay. And then there's certain types of leprosy in your hair or your beard. Now with that leprosy in Exodus, it's stated that his skin turned white as snow. That's how you know that the leprosy was the leprosy of your skin deteriorating, right? Hold that right quick. Can you can you help me out right quick? Because he holding Jeremiah 17. I need Leviticus, uh, what is that, 14? Give me Leviticus 14, because that's going to answer your question about the different types of leprosy. 14 and 1. Start at 1. Leviticus 14 and 1. Verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, This shall be the law of the leper in the day of his cleansing. So now this is the law of the leper, right? He shall be brought unto the priest. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say 14? Give me 13. Because 13 is going to listen. That's what you do after. Right? 13 verse 1. Yeah. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying, When a man shall have in the skin of his flesh a rising. A rising? That's the, the boy, right? A scab. Scab. That could be a form of leprosy. Or a bright spot, uh -huh. and it be in the skin of his flesh, like the plague of leprosy, mm -hmm. then he shall be brought unto Aaron the priest, or unto one of his sons the priest. So it just shows you the three types of leprosy in the skin. Mm -hmm. It'll be a rising, like a boil, 
it'll be a scab, or it'll be a bright spot, like, yeah. like your skin deteriorating. So those are the forms of leprosy. But it goes back to the question that he was asking about the race part. Jeremiah 17 and 4. What did God say would happen to the Israelites? And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thine heritage. God said that the Israelites would discontinue from their heritage. Your heritage starts with your name, the name of your people. Then it goes to your culture, your customs, your beliefs, the holidays that you celebrate. All that's part of your heritage. The food that you eat, the clothes that you wear, the language that you speak. All of us, we've lost that. So now we've modernized ourselves to modern day terms, black, African American, things like that. You've taken on the language of your oppressors. You've taken on the culture of the people who brought you in slavery. Why? Because, like we said, the children would get taken, right? If all of you had children, if you call yourself black, aren't you gonna teach your children that they're black too? Mm -hmm. well, what if somebody take your children away from you before they have the knowledge to understand what you're saying? Mm -hmm. They could tell them that you're whatever. If I take your children, I wanna call them monkey. You're monkey now. The children are gonna say, okay, I guess we're monkeys. And if you, have, if you met your children, you'll say, you're not monkey. You're black, but you were taken away from me and I couldn't teach you that. In the same way, your ancestors didn't call themselves black. Your ancestors didn't call themselves African Americans. Your ancestors, like we're reading in the Bible, were the Israelites. And the reason why we don't know that is because we are the children of those slaves who were taken and then given these other names. First you was a Negro, then you was a nigger, then you were colored, then you were Afro-American. When you are African American, now you're black. You see that? But that's why but the reason is because we simply, as a nation, as a whole, our people don't follow God's commandments. Would you guys say that black people as a whole, are we up here or are we down here? Talking about like a, as a whole. Way. Anyway, yeah. economic. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, right? Yeah. We're all sinners, right? Of course, but particularly when we're talking about the Bible. Even though everybody's a sinner, God punishes the children of Israel more than he punishes other people for committing sins because he gave them the law directly. Read that in Amos 3 record. Let me prove that. Because everything I'm saying is coming out of the Bible. I don't want, you know, these are not my opinions. I did not write this book, any of the books in here. I'm simply showing you guys what I was not taught in church, unfortunately. But we all believe in this Bible. That's one thing we all can agree on. And these Bible, this Bible has words in that a lot of us are not privy to or understand. Read that in Amos chapter three, verse one. Amos three and one. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel. So now God wants you Israelites, now that you guys know that, he wants you to hear this word that he's spoken to you, right? Against the whole family, which are brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, uh -huh. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. No, he knew everybody on earth. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. God said he only knows the children of Israel. Therefore what? Therefore I will punish you for all your iniquities. So like this, right? You guys ever got in trouble with your friends? Yeah. yeah. You came home, did your parents punish your friends with you or did they just punish you? In the same way, God said that he only knows the children of Israel. I know you, I named you. Remember, Israel was not Israel, for he was Jacob, and God changed his name to something that reflected him. So now that's his son. Read that in uh, Exodus 4 and 22. Israel is the most high son, and just like a son, if you get in trouble with your friends, your father's gonna punish you. So he said, you, you need some new friends, really. That's what's gonna happen. In the same way, like you said, we're all sinners. But the most high made that covenant with the Israelites. And he said, if you don't listen to me, no problem. I'm gonna curse you forever until you decide to listen. And that's why we are still cursed to this day. That's why you look around all the city. Anybody ever traveled a lot in America? Been to Houston, Dallas, Atlanta, New York? Don't they got a nice part of the city? And then don't they got a city where the, the part of the city where there's a hood, or a project, or a slum? Who live there? We that uh we we were there? He got that. Give me, give me Deuteronomy 28 and 16. That was actually the first curse that God said would happen to the Israelites. He said, wherever you live, that's where I'm going to curse you. Read that. 28 and 16? Yeah. What you got? 
Leviticus, it's 422. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 16. Cursed shall you be in the city, and cursed shall you be in the field. Cursed shall you be in the city, and cursed shall you be in the field. Every city you go to, like I stated, there's a part of the city where there's poor economics, there's poor development, the houses are deteriorating, and all the people live there. Have you guys ever looked up the term uh, ghetto? Mm -hmm. It came from uh, World War II, the, the Jewish people were never put into, um, before confinement camps, they were put in the ghettos. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But it actually comes before that. That's, that's a more modern definition, but you're actually right. That's the place, or it, when you look up the definition, it's a quarter of the city in which Jews were formerly required to live, the ghettos. But notice who uses that term and has that term applied to them the most. Is it Jewish people or is it black people? You ever call the Jewish man ghetto? I bet you call some brothers and sisters ghetto in your life like, multiple times. Like, look at this brother, that's ghetto. Every day. Look at this, that's ghetto. <laughs> Like, that's what you do. You, you use those terms. And the reason why I'm short is because, think about it. Jewish. If you add I-S-H to the end of a word, does that make it actually what it is, or does that make it kind of like what it is? It depends on the word. Give me an example of a word that means it's what it is. Finish. You're a person from Finland. Okay, finish. But finish, when you say finish, are you talking about the... Uh, no, no, finish like two ends. It's like someone from Finland. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I see what you're saying. But like if you use like let's say your shirt is uh, grayish or something like that, right? Yeah. It's it's gray, but it's not the normal gray or something mm -hmm. like that, right? You got English, Anglo, ish from England. Yeah, I think when you're talking about nationality, it's a little different. Well, why did not call themselves Israelites? Because in the Bible, what did God call them? What do you mean? The, the race, the nation, mm -hmm. His chosen people. I think you referred to them both as Israelites and Jews. Are Israelites is what? Jews. But well, Jews was a term that people applied to them. In the Bible, Israelites is what God called them. And a lot of people from Israel. That, they would be called Israeli. Right? They were not just a person who's from Israel or who was born in Israel. It's like this. If you're American, right? You were born in America. But there are many different races of people who are born in America. It doesn't make like, if, if you line up a, a white American, yourself, Chinese American, right? These are three different separate people, but you all are American because you're born in this area, right? That's the difference between a country that you're born in and a nationality that makes you who you are. Right? That's the difference. And what we're, again, what we're trying to show is that, you know, black people, in a sense, um, we are actually, in fact, bloodline descendants of these people. It's actually been genetically proven. Um, the uh, first man like in the world ever come from Africa? Uh, I'm not sure about that. I did. I, I heard research about that, like in Ethiopia or something. Yeah, I, I think they were just the like, man. yeah, they were just like uh, doing like architecture or whatever. And I think that was just like the only thing they had to find. But I believe you though, because I mean, like, like the world's most abundant resources come from Africa. Like Africa is pretty much like the center of the world. It's literally like in the center of the world. Well, that that's true. And and I want to show you something too. This is the uh, Zonovan Compact Bible Dictionary, right? A lot of times when we talk about Africa, we just like to lump up everybody in Africa as one people, right? That's not that's not necessarily the case, though. If I if I take a Chinese man, a Thai man, a Korean man, and a Japanese man, they all gonna look fair skinned, slanted eyes, and pointy hair, right? But if you tell all those men, hey, look, y'all are the same because y'all look alike. Right? They, they're gonna, they, they, they take that seriously because they take their culture and their heritage seriously. You can do the same with an Arab and an Iraqi, an Afghanistanian man. They might kill you if you say that you're the same just because you're somewhat lighter brown skin. You know, you got straight hair and you're all Muslims. Yeah, similar people. Exactly. In the same way, Africa, you have many different, uh, you have many different races and ethnicities. Not to say that some of those tribes of people are not of the same people, but you have many different uh, nationalities. That's what I'm trying to say. When it comes to the Negroes, though, you all are blacks, African Americans. You would not be considered as Africans in the Bible. Africans in the Bible, do y'all know which son of Noah they came from? 
him. You said what? He was like him. That's exactly correct. That's what I'm about to read. As soon as I find it. The definition of ham in the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary is very interesting. It says, it says here, uh, where is it? It's ham, right? The definition of ham? You got a curse file number on the bottom inside the Exactly, exactly. Right here. It says, Ham, the youngest son of Noah, born probably 96 years before the flood, and one of eight persons to live through the flood, he became the progenitor of the dark races, right? Dark, dark skinned races. Not the Negroes. But they say he became the progenitor of the dark races, not the Negroes, though. Who are the Negroes? The Negroes were our ancestors, the ones that got taken into slavery. Sure. It says, but the Egyptians, Ethiopians, Libyans, and Canaanites, like we stated in the Bible, like we were talking about earlier, those Egyptians who Moses came across, those were dark-skinned people. And like we showed, Moses, who was an Israelite himself, he was mistaken for an Egyptian because Moses was an Israelite and the Israelites were black. That's all we trying to show. Um, so I think that, you know, you kind know, of You talked a lot about the Old Testament, though, but what about the New Testament? What about Jesus? Oh, of course. Oh, of course. Yeah. Let's read that in uh, Matthew 19, 16. So now Christ was Israelite as well, right? Yeah. We, we do. We know that he was Jewish. Yeah. Right. Now let's see what Christ said in Matthew 15 and 24. Let's read that right here. 24. I want you to read Matthew 15 and 24. And you in Matthew 19 and 16, right? Yes. All right, hold that right there. Let me read that for you. Matthew 15 and 24. Yep. And he answered and said, so this is Christ talking, right? I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So now when Christ came in the flesh, he came to God's chosen people, the Israelites. He just said, what do you read it for? So, how are y'all doing? 15 and 24. Read that again for me. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, who sent Christ? God. God, right? So that means God sent Christ to who? Israel. The lost sheep, right? Why do he call them lost sheep? Do you guys know anything about a herding sheep at all? Well, when you have a group of sheep, there might be a time where one, two, maybe three will stray away from the pack. And what the shepherd has to do is he has to lead the flock and go and get this other sheep that left. Matter of fact, read that in Matthew 18. You're 19, go to the previous chapter, Matthew 18 and 11. Read that. All right. For the Son of Man is come to save that which is lost. Christ came to save that which was lost. Who is he saving? Who is lost? Right? What did he say? He said the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The lost of the Israelites are lost sheep. Look at us today. We don't even know that we're Israelites. We don't even know that God chose us. We don't even know that we're the sheep that he is leading with his shepherd, that being Christ. Right? And how are we supposed to come back to Christ? Read that in Matthew 19 and 16. Matthew 19 and 16. Sure, every last one of you want to make it into heaven, right? Let's yeah. see what Christ says about making it into heaven. And behold, one came and said unto him. One came to Christ and they asked him a question. What did he ask? Good master, what good things shall I do that I may receive eternal life? Eternal life equals heaven, right? He's asking him, what do I need to do to make it into heaven? And he said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. So now Christ told this man who straight up asked him, what do I have to do to make it into heaven? He said, keep God's commandments. Now, we know that that's not the only thing. You have to believe in your heart. That's what you might. I'm sure you guys know that. That's something that everybody, right? Or every Christian should know. The belief as well as keeping his commandments. The reason why I brought this up is because I know when I was in church, they actually taught us that we don't have to keep God's commandments. That's what they taught us. I don't know if you guys uh, teach that all. We know that. The commandments point us to the words that good living. Exactly, exactly. It's not that keeping the commandments saves you. Mm -hmm. It's that keeping the commandments is what God, first of all, told us to do, number one. And number two, that's how we love our neighbor as ourselves. 
by not stealing from him, by not committing adultery, by not coveting him, by not bearing false witness, right? All those commandments that God gave, that's how you love your neighbor as yourself. The other commandments that deal with him, like, remember the Sabbath day. You guys keep the Sabbath? In a sense, yeah. In a sense. What's the Sabbath? It's a day of rest. A day of rest, right? What day is that? Typically a Sunday. A Sunday? Typically. Some people say Saturday, some but it's most Saturday. people say Saturday. I'm glad you some said that. You said Friday. some people say Saturday. What were you saying? I said typically Sunday. Some people, if you're like Seventh Day Adventist, then you're going to be Saturday. Other religions is Friday. It just it all depends. Gotcha. What does it depend on? Your belief? I feel like it depends on what people define as the Seventh Day. Mm. What people define as the Seventh Day, right? Now definitions. The word definition comes from the word definite. Definite is something that's absolute. Like mm. two plus two is four. That's a definite answer. There's no, there's no other answer, right? So how can people have a different, definite or definition of when something is supposed to be, unless they coming up with their own mind or they follow? What about Paul talks about? Which is to keep whatever they openly as he sees fit. What do you mean? There's a verse, I don't remember it off the top of my head. No problem, go to the, but why, why are you getting that? Give me uh, Acts chapter 5, 29. And you give me Exodus 20 and 8. We're going to show you where the Sabbath day comes from. 5 and 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. So we're supposed to obey what God says above what men say. So if God says, my Sabbath is on this day, but then men say, nah, uh, we want to do the Sabbath on this day. We're supposed to do what God said to do and not what men said to do, right? Give me that in Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Now he's talking about the Sabbath day, right? Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. The seventh day. When is the seventh day of the week? Sunday? Sunday? Yeah. You got your phone? Yeah. I thought Sunday was the first day of the week. Sunday you got a calendar? The yeah. What's the first day to the left? Because we read Monday. left to right, right? Well, um, to the left is Saturday. The well, first day? Sunday. You, I mean, you talk about Sunday or Saturday? I'm asking you, on your calendar. I guess it some calendars start on Monday. Just start on Monday. I know. I, I got some. I got some for that too. Don't worry. Let me. This verse here from Paul in Colossians chapter two, verse sixteen, seventeen says, "So let no one judge you in food or in drink, or regarding a festival or a new moon or Sabbaths, which are a shadow of things to come, but the substance of His Christ." Right. So we know when uh, Christians, after Christ rose from the dead on a Sunday, many Christians began to observe. Sunday as the holy day in honor of Christ's resurrection. Uh, and so we see that commandment there from Paul saying, you know, observe the days as you see fit. You know? But the, the importance, the idea of the Sabbath is that we're all taking a, a day of rest, taking a day, taking that time to spend God, and be whatever day that is. And Paul says there, don't let anybody judge you for which particular day you choose. Well, read that again in Colossians 2 and 16. And uh, real quick, you said uh, that was Sunday, right? The first day was Sunday. The first day on it was Sunday. So that means the seventh would be Saturday, Saturday right? right? Now, in regards to your point, mm -hmm. when Paul was talking to these Colossians, right, yeah. you believe that this verse is saying that it doesn't matter when you keep the Sabbath. It's just as long as you're keeping a Sabbath, yeah. it's, it's okay and acceptable, right? Yeah. So this is my question. Read that again in Acts 5 29. Because we know that the apostles, they don't contradict themselves or Christ, right? So now let's read that again. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said... That includes Paul, right? So they all, all the apostles are talking. What did they say? We ought to obey God rather than men. We ought to obey God rather than men. So now, we just read in Exodus 20 and 8 that God said his Sabbath is on the seventh day. Now, what Paul is speaking of in Colossians is he's saying people were actually being judged for keeping the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. do, you, do, you know, do you know that in, in history, the Greeks used to oppress the Israelites for actually keeping the Sabbath mm -hmm. on the Sabbath. They would actually like burn them in fire for keeping the Sabbath. 
So what he's saying is, you shouldn't let somebody uh, oppress you into or judge you for doing something that God told you. It's just like new moons, right? Okay. New moons is a commandment. Yeah. That's a commandment in Numbers 28. We're supposed to keep new moons too, but a lot of people don't keep new moons, mm -hmm. right? So a lot of people don't keep Sabbath. Mm -hmm. So what he's simply saying is, or in festival days, right? Do you know the festival days of the Most High? Say that one more time. You know the festival days of the Most High? No, I don't know the festival days. But see, Christ, as a follower of Christ, Christ kept all those that he kept Sabbaths. He kept new moons, Passover, that's one of them. The Feast of Tabernacles, that's another one of them, right? Some Christians haven't even heard of these things. When we keep these things, we, like the Feast of Tabernacles, for example, is a, is a feast where you're supposed to be camping for seven days. That's in Leviticus 23. But I'm sure we know about Christmas and Easter, though, right? Mm -hmm. Let's be for real. We know about those two. Those are not in the Bible. The Feast of Tabernacles is there. The Passover is there. So the question is, why do we know about Christmas and Easter when, when you do history and research? Those are pagan, right? We know about those and we associate them with God and the Bible. But we don't know the real things that God has. Mm -hmm. That should spark something in our minds to say, well, maybe it's something that we're not going to talk. Just like the Israelites. Maybe it's something we're not going to talk, right? But let's keep going. When did Christ have his sermons and give his teachings, right? When did he do that? Mark chapter 6, verse 2. Let, uh, let, let Gabriel get it. Mark 6 and 2. Let's read about Christ right here. And when the Sabbath day was come, six, I'm sorry, I started one. All right. And he went out from thence. Christ went out. And came into his own country. Uh -huh. And his disciples followed him. Twelve followed him, right? And when, the, when the Sabbath day was come. When the what day was come? The Sabbath day. Now, you said that sometimes people keep it on Friday, some people on Sunday, some people on Saturday, if it's Sunday day finished, right? Well, if you do in-depth research on the word Saturday, in Spanish, the word for Saturday is what? Sabado. Sabado, right? Spanish is a derivative of Roman Latin. You know the Roman Latin word for Saturday? Sabaton. Roman Latin is a derivative of Greek. You know what the Greek word for Saturday is? Shabbatun. Greek is an offshoot of Phoenician or Hebrew, which is what the Bible was written from in the Old Testament. And the New Testament was written from the Greek. You know what the Hebrew word for Saturday is? Shabbat. And when it says Sabbath, here in the Greek, because this is the New Testament, it'll say Shabbat, which is the word in Greek for Saturday. In Hebrew, which was in Exodus 20, because the Old Testament was translated from Hebrew, mm -hmm. when it says to remember the Sabbath day, that word for Sabbath is Shabbat, which is the word for Saturday in English. Because the Bible is just a translation. So every word has a another word in another language and it just translates to one so that's how we know emphatically from a simple example like looking at your calendar or from a linguistic or semantic standard from looking at the word and the history that flows along with it so now we know and can prove that the saturday is in fact saturday right let me just give you one more verse. Can I use your phone right quick? Yes. You go on a uh, safari and Google the etymology of Saturday. Yeah, and again, the reason why I'm showing you guys all these things is because we just read the Bible. That's it. There's nothing about denomination or, you know, I'm not trying to say that you shouldn't be a Baptist. You should be whatever you want to be. Whatever leads you to God, hopefully you're getting all the knowledge that you can get from the scriptures and that's it but from a purely biblical standpoint God does have a chosen people and his chosen people are the blacks African Americans as we prove anybody have any questions about that or disputes about that yeah I want to ask you too yeah uh, one I was like what do you identify like under like the Christianity like how would you be Baptist like what would you call yourself and you said two questions? Yeah. So that's the first one. What's your second? Uh, the second one was like, oh yeah, because you proved that we're the uh, the descendants of the Israelites. So like, what would we do like moving forward? Great question. I love that second question. First question to address your first point. I do not identify as a Christian. The reason being is because Christian is a religion. Mm -hmm. The Bible has nothing to do with religion at all whatsoever. Mm -hmm. You will not find any denominations. You will not find anything in regards to 
quote unquote Christian denominations at all whatsoever in the Bible. Okay. Catholic, Methodist, Baptist, whatever. Right. I do not identify as a Christian, but I do follow Christ. Right, I get you. So the reason why I don't call myself a Christian is because I know in the minds of most people, you're gonna associate Christian with Christianity, right. as opposed to associating Christian with a follower of Christ. So I make the distinction there. Right. That's for number one. Number two, if you go back to Deuteronomy 28, you said, knowing that we're the Israelites now, how do we move forward, right? Because these curses are continuing to happen to us to this day. Give me a... Uh, give me Deuteronomy like yeah. 28 and 1, and I want you to give me 1 Kings uh, chapter 8, verse 46, and hold that right quick. Go to your Bible app and give me Baruch chapter 2 and start at 28. Alright? So this is how you move forward. I'm going to show you these three verses and these will answer your question. Knowing that you're an Israelite, knowing that you're God's chosen people, how do we go about our lives moving forward, right? Deuteronomy 28 and read verse 1 again. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1. Huh? And it shall come to pass. This will happen in the future, right? If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. He said if you hearken diligently, the word hearken means listen. If you listen very attentively to God, right? To observe, to observe and to do all his commandments. You have to do his commandments, right? Literally, like, read them out the Bible, learn them, and start to do them, right? Then Which what? I command thee this day that the, the Lord, thou God, will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Now, we know that black people are down here, right? We can all agree on that. So if you want to not be down here and you want to elevate yourself, to the standard that God told us to be, we have to listen and follow his commandments, right? First Kings 8, 46. If they sin against you, for there is no man that sinneth not. We as the Israelites, we've sinned against God with us. And you be angry with them. He's angry with us. God is angry with us, even to this day, right? And deliver them to the enemy. He's delivered. Hold on. Why are we in America? Is it not because our people were delivered into the hands of their oppressors? They were, we just read that as a curse. That's but, why we're still here to this I day. I mean, I will say, like, there was slavery in Africa, like, before that happened. Yeah, there's a lot of countries and people across the world. Every, every country has had slaves. Mm -hmm. Every country. Particularly, though, when you look at the Israelites, we were enslaved by Africans. As a matter of fact, our first slavery was under the Egyptians, the Nexans, who were Africans. And what did God do? He saved them from them. In the same way he saved us from the Babylonians in uh, Isaiah, the book of Isaiah. They were uh, people of color. But he saved them from them as well. In the same way, he can save you from anybody who you're under. Whether it's Africans, whether it's Caucasians, whether it's Asians, or whoever. It doesn't really matter who the oppressor is. What matters is we have committed sin against God, and that's the reason why we're down here. It's not because you're black, or because you got woolly hair because you're different from everybody else. It's because you've committed, a sin, you've committed sins. We have committed sins as a nation, as a whole, against our God. That's why it keeps on reading what it says what? So that they carried them away captives into the land of the enemy. Carried away captives. Far or near. Far or near. So this is not just where we're at, because we're everywhere. Like you stated, we're in South America, Central America. All these Israelites in those areas, these Negroes in those areas, have a different oppressor than you do. The oppressor doesn't matter. What matters is, if we do what after we've been brought into that land, then what? Yet, if they shall bethink themselves in the land, whether they will carry captives. You guys know what bethink means? It means to remember. If they remember whom, why am I calling myself black or African American? If they remember whom, why is it that I don't know my culture and my heritage? What was my culture? What was my heritage? And then go about seeking to find them. If they bethink themselves, if they remember who they are. This is really like a movie. You ever watched a movie where a person was brainwashed and then they start to get flashbacks and different things of who they were in the beginning. And then it's toward the end of the movie that they find out who they really are and truly are. That's what he's saying right here. If they bethink themselves in the land of their enemy, then we're going to start following his commandments and they're going to be elevated, right? The root 2 and 38 or 28 is going to say the same exact thing. Yeah. 
As thou spakest by the, my, thy servant Moses, in the day when thou didst command him to write the law before the children of Israel, saying, If ye will not hear my voice, Surely this very great multitude shall be turned into a small number among the nations where I will scatter them. So nations, plural, be scattered into many nations, right? For I knew that they would not hear me uh -huh. because it would, it is a stiff-necked people. We are a stiff-necked and hard-headed people. The most difficult people that I have ever dealt with have not been Caucasians or Asians or even ethnic Africans. It has been with brothers. Really and truly, you are most likely to get killed by a brother. You do know that statistic. Our sisters are more likely to get abused or harmed by a brother. Statistic. We are a stiff-necked people. We don't listen. Not only do we not listen to ourselves and each other, we don't listen to our God. Right? Keep going. But in the land of their captivities. In the lands of our captivities. America is a land, one of the many. We trying to fulfill it. And that's what we trying to get our brothers and sisters to fulfill it as well. What about Babylon? When they were taken captive into Babylon. And so as contemporary Christians, that's what we would say was part of the Jewish prophecy. You know, the Old Testament prophets calling people back to Israel, calling people back to God, to Yahweh. It's the captivity in Babylon is how we do that. A lot of those prophecies. What, what you guys, what's your explanation? Because we know historically there's there's historical information outside of the Bible and, and old papyri and things that have come up. Exactly. So how do you guys reconcile that? With what? With that. Just this idea that we're supposed to, that the, all of this is talking about us when we believe that all of that has already happened to this world. Oh, well, well, that's a great question because those things can happen multiple times. It's just like when God gives a prophecy, let me just give you an example. Go to Second Samuel chapter 6. I started at 14. Sometimes when God gives a prophecy, it'll it'll manifest itself multiple times throughout history. Let's say, for example, prophecy is about Christ, right? You know how in Matthew 2 and 6 it says, Out of Egypt I called my son, because Joseph took Christ into Egypt and he fleeing from Herod. But really that was a prophecy about Israel. Because so where, where was the verse that I came from? Matthew, go to Matthew 2 and 6 to show him that right there. All right. And you read what in 2 Samuel 7? Samuel 14. Uh, it's not this is a This is a manifold prophecy, right? And when thou days be fulfilled. This is, talking, this is God talking to David, right? When thou shalt sleep without fathers. When David dies. I will set up the seed after thee. He will set up his seed, his child after him, right? Which shall proceed out of thy bowels. Yeah, which will come from you. And I will establish his kingdom. He will establish his kingdom. Now, do you agree that that's a prophecy about Christ? Uh, I think we looked at the prophecy of David about Solomon. It Solomon. is about Solomon. Yeah. It's also about Christ too. Let's keep reading. Christ. He shall build in the house for my name. He will build a house for God, right? Now, we know Solomon built a physical temple, yeah. but in Revelations, God and Christ is the temple, right? It says that in Revelation 20. Keep going. And I, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Hold on. Was Solomon's throne, did it end? Mm. Well, yeah. Because it did. It ended with Babylon. Right? That's when the throne was overthrown and they were taken into that temple. So the, he said that I will establish this seed of David, for an everlasting throne. Who do we know is going to sit on the everlasting throne? What's, what's the next verse? Can you read that again? Read that and read the next verse. He shall build a house for my name, uh -huh. and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Uh -huh. I will be his father. Uh -huh. He shall be my son. Hold on. Read that again. I will be his father. He will be his father. He shall be my son. And this man who's going to sit on the throne, he's going to be my son. Who's the son of God? That's Christ. That's how we know this is talking about Solomon in an immediacy, right? Because David and Solomon were one generation apart, right? That was David's direct son. But then we know Christ in the New Testament is the offspring or the seed of David. And he's going to sit on this everlasting throne. And God said, I will be his father and he will be my son. Oh yeah, go ahead. Keep going. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men 
and with the stripes of the children of men. So now it says, if he commit iniquity, I'm going to chasten him with the rod of men and the stripes of men, right? And Christ had stripes on him. The stripe is when you get whipped and it leaves that lash on you, right? That's the stripe. Christ had those. Christ was punished, not for his sins, for the Israelites' sins, for the, for the world's sins. Right? That's what Christ was doing. And that's a great point that Titus just brought up. Because that's how you know that not only was this talking about Solomon, but also was talking about Christ. In the same way, you have many prophecies in the Bible where it's talking about multiple things happening at different times in the future. This is the example I was giving you earlier in Matthew 26. And thou of Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the princes of Judah, for out all the for out, excuse me, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Hold on, I, I quoted the wrong verse here. There was a verse where it says, uh, out of Egypt I called myself. I don't know where it's at, but I thought it was in Matthew 26. That's not in there. But you can look it up and just, just put uh, out of Egypt. King James Search. Version, and it'll show up. But I was just showing you that that's a prophecy there. It's talking about Christ there, because when Christ was born, mm -hmm. Herod was trying to kill all the firstborn in that uh, in that area, and Joseph fled into Egypt. Here. And then he called him out of Egypt to come back to teach and preach to the Israelites. Here. But that prophecy was in the Old Testament that was talking about the Israelites, because the Israelites were in Egypt. And out of Egypt, he called his son, the Israel. Matter of fact, give me that in uh, Exodus 4, 22. We're supposed to read that earlier. We, we didn't necessarily read that. Exodus 4, 22. And let's see who the son of God was in the Old Testament. So what would you guys say is necessary for salvation? What's necessary for salvation is having both faith and works. Faith in your belief and trust in God, that he will fulfill his promises and his prophecies that he has given, old, new, and apocryphal. Mm -hmm. And works is talking about your keeping the commandments. Now Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says that it's not works, it's just by faith. Yes, that's correct. What's that? So what's the math? What's the... Oh, Matthew 2 and 15. 15. My bad. Right. Let me get this right quick, and then I'm going to answer your question about Ephesians 2, because I like that question. That's a great question. That you have. 2 and 15, what he says? And was there unto the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of by the Lord, by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. That's the verse I was talking about. That's Matthew 2 and 15, not 6. But again, like he said, out of Egypt, I called my son. But what did it say in Exodus 4 and 22? Thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, right? Thus said the Lord, Israel is my son. No, who is my son? Israel. Israel is his son. Mm -hmm. Even my firstborn. Even his firstborn, right? But we know that Christ was what? He was called the only begotten. Just like he saved Israel and brought them out of Egypt. Yeah. He took Christ and he brought him out of Egypt and brought them both to the land of Israel to perform whatever works he wanted to perform. And that was going to be a question in um, Ephesians, Ephesians 2, 2 and that's start at, start at 8 and 8 to 11. And you give me, what is that? Deuteronomy 5 and 33. I'm glad you said that because what Paul is doing, and can you give me James 2? What Paul is accentuating this because there are many quotes in Paul, because you know Paul was an apostle so he wrote epistles and letters mm -hmm. so what Paul was is he would go to different churches and each church would have a specific problem or a specific uh, issue that they needed to be addressed and he would address them well we know in this time, many Israelites they knew about keeping the law they didn't know about having faith yeah. right so what Paul would do is if they have a church and they talking about law, 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 works, works, works. He would remind them that the works does not save you. The law does not save you. And he would accentuate having faith in 
other epistles or other apostles, they might go to churches who were more faith, 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 and no, no works, right? And then what he would do is he would accentuate works too. You see that? And that's why I said we need both because in James 2, which we're going to read, James is speaking to Israelites who are accentuating faith. They're big, big on faith, which is good. And then Paul in uh, Ephesians 2, they were more on works, and so he's accentuating faith in so let's prove that you need both, right? We're in Ephesians, yeah? Two, and he said, you want eight, right? Eight and nine, and you don't need to eleven. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Ten is what so. So he said, by faith that you're saved, it's not of works, lest any man should boast. You know what boasting was? Kind of bragging. 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 bragging, right? Oh, I did this today. Arrogance, right? Pride, no. I mean, I keep the law, you know, type of thing. But you have no faith. You don't believe and trust in God. You just keep the law and that's it, right? He said, less than you guys should boast, so keep on. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus. Hold on. No problem, it's good, it's good. Yeah, I know yeah, we've been, we've been talking for a little while, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand, but um, should we start with the, who's good to last person? Because my wife just texted you. Gotcha. But we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. We're created for what? For we are created, we, for we are his workmanship created. His workmanship, so we're his workmen, right? Created for what? Jesus Christ unto good works. Unto good works. What's good works? The fruit of our faith, right? things that we do because of our faith. Exactly. What, what are the things that you're supposed to do because of your faith? It's not that the works save us, right. they're a product of our faith, it's right. a product of being transformed. Exactly. So part of being transformed is doing it's, those works. It's a product. It's, it's that sign of genuine faith. It's not that it's required. That's what we would say. That's what we would say. It's not required. Yeah, it's not required for your salvation. It's a product of your faith, of being saved, of being transformed. I would say, by like, Holy Spirit. I would say, like, because you have faith, you go naturally. You go naturally. Yeah. Inclination. Someone that maybe says like you they should, have faith, but they're not. Don't really have that genuine relationship with Jesus. Then you're not gonna see those parts. I would say, like, in that instance of like words gets you saved, that would be more like repenting of your sins and turning your back on the things that drive you away from faith. And as a result of that, all the good works and all the good fruits would be there, like love, joy, yeah. peace, and all that stuff. You guys pretty much agree with him, right? Yeah. Where you're repenting for your sins, right? Yeah, that's what you're supposed to do. I'm glad you said that. How do you know what a sin is? He talks about it. And uh, about Ten Commandments, like, if you're not following the Ten Commandments, I would say that's a sin. Right. Not just the Ten, he gave more, but let's just say the 10, right? Let's just say the 10. If you don't do those, you will be in sin, right? So repentance is confession and then forsaking. So if I steal, what I have to do is I have to pray to God and say, God, I'm sorry, I stole this. I stole that. I stole all of these things. And then to make it genuine, I would have to do what? Not steal. Not and steal, that's the right? word that, that I believe you're talking about. Yeah. Exactly. And as a result of that, you have good fruits. Exactly. You put your faith. You put your faith in God, and He transforms your heart, and then all the good fruits come. From you, in addition to turning your back on these things. Exactly. exactly. Sorry, we got a little. I understand, man. We've been talking for a little while, but I'm glad you guys came to talk. What's your name? Malik. Nice to meet you. 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 Nice to meet you, man. What's your name? Mark Anthony. Mark Anthony. Nice to meet you, Mark. That's cool. Nice to meet you, brother. Nice to meet you, too. Nice to meet you, too. You still in the Jeep? You still in the Jeep? Oh, Randy's in the I left him. I don't think I'll be back. Sit and take a trade. Yeah.